What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. So we're having a look at the Labour leadership now and reports in the Express of someone that Boris Johnson will be most terrified of. And I'm sorry, but the Express are living in Joe Swinson's fantasy politics here because the person they claim Boris Johnson should be most terrified of is not someone that Boris should be worried about. We are, of course, talking about Arch Ramona Sir Keir Starmer. You know, the guy who helped Labour take the position of going for a second referendum that made Corbyn sit on the fence, as you will all remember, and helped seal their election disaster where they got absolutely trounced by the British electorate who voted the Tory party in with a massive majority. So the Express's bullshit headline article says, Labour leader, the Jeremy Corbyn replacement, Boris Johnson will be most terrified of. No he won't. The race to succeed Jeremy Corbyn as Labour party leader following the disastrous general election result is heating up and experts fear one candidate could quickly challenge Boris Johnson and even win votes from the Conservative party. Jeremy Corbyn will quit as Labour Party leader over the coming weeks after seeing the party's worst general election performance in 35 years. No, it was the worst general election performance in about 85 years, wasn't it? 1935. It wasn't 35 years, so you haven't even got the article right, the Express. For fuck's sake, come on, you can do better than this. Labour won just 203 seats and was crushed by Boris Johnson's Conservative Party in what had been predicted to be one of the closest fought general elections in recent British political history. Well, whoever predicted that was a fucking idiot because no one else predicted it. Everyone could see that the Tories should have got a stonking majority and they did. Following the humiliating defeat, Mr Corbyn said, I will discuss with our party to ensure there is a process of reflection on this result and on the policies that the party will take going forward. Yeah, like their manifesto that they won the argument with. In it, Corbyn, you idiot. And I will lead the party during that period to ensure that discussion takes place and we move on into the future. No, you want to stay on so you can try and ensure you get your candidate in there to continue your batshit crazy policies that will destroy the economy and the country. But luckily, we'll never see you elected. So I hope you do stay on and I hope you put one of your little friends in there so you can continue to lose elections and have a real legacy, Jeremy. That will be your legacy. The legacy of making the Labour Party lose elections. Mind you, I suppose that legacy would be better than the last Labour Prime Minister's legacy of leaving the country in debt and being what some might consider a war criminal. Sir Keir Starmer, Rebecca Long-Bailey, Lisa Nandy, Yvette Cooper, Jess Phillips, Clive Lewis, Angela Rayner and Emily Formbury are all in the running to be the next Labour leader and lead the party to the 2024 general election. And like I've said from that list you've just seen there, Boris Johnson should not be worried about any of them. They are all Ramonin shit weasels from Labour who went against what the public wanted and their own manifesto pledges for the last two and a half years. So, no, they don't stand a chance, I'm sorry. 2024, 2028, 2029, it doesn't matter when it is, none of them stand a chance. They're all Ramonas, people are not going to forget that. Shadow Brexit Secretary Miss Long-Bailey, who is a new generation of MP on the left of Labour and is a close ally of Mr Corbyn, would likely have the backing of those currently in charge of the party, meaning she would never have the backing of the public, as we see at the last election. Labour members are largely on the left of the party and make up most of those who get to vote for the next leader, so it could, in theory, be a straightforward race for Miss Long-Bailey. But political experts have warned the leadership candidate Prime Minister Boris Johnson should fear most is shadow Brexit Secretary Sir Keir Starmer. No, they shouldn't, and for this exact reason we are about to see here. The remainder is seen as the centrist candidate and is hotly tipped as both a good communicator with the British public and experienced negotiator, having been central to Labour's talks with the EU over an alternative Brexit deal during 2019. Now let's just think about that for a minute. Why was he part of any alternative Brexit talks with the EU? He's not a government minister, he's the shit weasel shadow Brexit secretary. The only people who should be talking about deals and not alternative deals with the EU is the government of the day. Labour should not have been talking with them at all, they should have just been looking over what the Conservatives done as the shadow cabinet. I don't see why losers get a say, and they definitely shouldn't be having discussions about alternative trade talks with the European Union, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but it don't seem right to me. Dr Steve McCabe, Associate Professor and Senior Fellow at the Centre for Brexit Studies at Birmingham City University, 
toldexpress.co.uk, Sir Keir Starmer looks sensible and as a former director of public prosecutions who may be criticised for being too pro-Remain for those who believe in leave and was sidelined during the campaign, will be able to present a more reasonable and rationally argued case for social democracy and equality as opposed to Corbyn's far-left beliefs. No, as soon as you go for your social democracy and start spouting equality, you've lost half of the electorate already. We don't give a crap about none of that. It's the woke liberal elite, like the Remainer himself, Sir Keir Starmer, who believe in that crap. The average voter don't. We don't want none of your woke policies or none of that bullshit. You have Corbyn, Brexit, woke policies. That's a whole bad idea. When you get Sir Keir Starmer in there, shit economic policies and woke policies that no one wants. It's really not going to help Labour's situation, but they can carry on thinking what they want. And who the hell is ever going to believe Birmingham City University? Let's be honest. We know what British universities are like right now. They are very biased against Brexit. Rebecca Long-Bailey would be continuity Corbyn and most likely to stick with his ideology and pledges made in the 2019 manifesto. Yes, she would be Corbyn in a skirt. We already know this. Starmer would prove much more palatable than Corbyn, as would Yvette Cooper. Yes, but they've all been tarred with the same brush. People ain't going to forget that quickly. None of these people are really going to get elected. They might win a couple of more seats somewhere, but I highly doubt they're going to get elected as the Prime Minister, for the simple reason of people are going to remember their association with the Corbynated chicken and the shit weasel behaviour that they all took part in for the last three years since the vote to leave the European Union. Whoever takes over has to show that they are willing to be different and ditch the overt socialism that was being proposed by Corbyn. Alistair Jones, principal politics lecturer at De Montfort University in Leicester, believes Sir Keir Starmer and Miss Long Bailey have the ability to engage with the public while both have the attention to detail which is lacking in Boris Johnson and other senior members of the Conservative Party. Mr Jones said the Conservatives will fear Sir Keir Starmer and Rebecca Long-Bailey the most, as both have the ability to engage with the public, but they're both archery-moaners who have done everything they can to stop Brexit and democracy. I'm sorry, I'm sick of saying it, but people are not going to forget about that. Well, I definitely would like to hope that they wouldn't anyway. Starmer has been particularly effective in debating Brexit. Long Bailey has also been very prominent in campaigning. Yeah, they've both been debating against Brexit. That doesn't make them look good, does it? Let's be honest. Political point scoring in which Corbyn refused to participate will see some of the luster taken off the Johnson victory very quickly. Both Starmer and Long Bailey can be very effective in doing so. But Mr Jones warned Sir Keir Starmer might face an uphill task as he could struggle in his attempts to win back voters in Labour's traditional heartlands. He added, if Starmer or Long Bailey became the leader, they will need to show how Labour is still a broad church party, which as we know, they're not going to be able to. The arch remainers, people are not going to forget. I'm sick of saying it. Just said it again. They do not need to row back too much from the Corbyn agenda. No, they don't, because they'll continue to make themselves unelectable if they don't. So keep doing that, please. But they do need to pull the right of the party in behind them. But two political experts have warned much of the focus will be on whether Mr Johnson can deliver on his general election pledges, with the new Labour leader waiting to pounce on any big slip-ups. Yet that seems a bit more like it. These two political experts are probably more likely on point. Boris Johnson is going to be the architect of his own downfall if it's to happen. It won't be because of Labour or their leader the reason why they was to win the next election or any upcoming. It will be on Boris Johnson fucking it up, as I've said many times. Let's be honest, he's still a politician at the end of the day, guys. He's a lying shit weasel. They can all fuck it up. They argue many voters made it clear that they have lent their votes to the Conservatives and the electorate is very volatile, which is why Boris Johnson needs to deliver Brexit and actually do something for the people that have voted for him. As to whether he will or not is another matter. Costan Moronatis, a lecturer in politics and international relations at Leeds Trinity University, told Express.co.uk, while Starmer is seen as a London-centric Remainer, he is, his latest media interventions signal proximity to socialist values and affection towards Labour activists and Momentum members. Not going to help him win the next election, I'm sorry to say. The new electoral coalition established by the Tory majority government is fragile and heavily depends on how Get Brexit Done will be done. As soon as Brexit recedes into the political background, the Tories will have to move to a political territory traditionally dominated by Labour. 
And yes, they will have to do it, which is why I said it's up to Boris Johnson to keep his majority and to keep these Labour seats, obviously. If the next Labour leader can succeed where Corbyn failed and convince voters that Labour pledges can be implemented, the Conservatives should worry about losing votes. And the rest of it just carries on essentially talking about shit that I have already said. But I'm sorry, this Express article is talking a load of shit quite a few times. Boris Johnson should not be scared of Sir Keir Starmer in the slightest, for reasons I have explained many times, and I'm sure most of you know. A lot of my viewers themselves are ex-Labour voters, so let me know down in the comments section if you would vote for Sir Keir Starmer or any of the candidates suggested in this article for that matter. I would love to know if any of you would actually consider voting for them next time round if Brexit was fully delivered, which is still a big if, as you all know. But on that note, I am going to end the video there, guys. I want to thank our PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar, and YouTube members for supporting the channel, along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe with a notification bell, and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. And I'll see you all in the next one. And Corbyn neutral by Christmas. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. Ramon! Ramon!